Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. Today is Monday, the 22nd of May, 2017. <coughs> and we're here to talk about budget once again. Because we couldn't get enough of it the first time around, we want to go back and do it again. So, <coughs> um, And we've got our finance committee meeting. The folks here tonight to meet with us. Um, before we roll into that, do you want to do the minutes though first, maybe just to get that out of the way? Sure. And then, and then we can roll right into it. Motion. I'll second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero, sure. All right, so the finance committee. <clears throat> so what did uh, do you guys want to give a recap of your meeting on uh, Tuesday first, maybe? Last yeah, Tuesday? we had a, uh, a meeting. We had four members show up and discussing some possible options, including tightening the belt, as it's shown here tonight, and uh, taking some out of free cash. Uh, but a lot of discussion was had about next year. And, uh, tightening that's going to have to happen. So, yeah, we're sneaking by this year again, and then next year will be much different, I believe. Yeah, that's. I think that seems to be the, yeah. the consensus on that. <clears throat> and did you get a chance to look at some of Sherry's revised numbers before? Okay. okay. So, we're doing the so that 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 puts us. We've got like a total reduction of like thirty-seven thousand based on that. Um, and if you want, I can I can run down through the the categories. <clears throat> um, so we have a, re a recommended reduction of four thousand dollars under general government, and then we have six thousand under town buildings, a thousand for the police department, a thousand for the inspectors and other protection, a thousand from highway, a thousand from the library, twelve thousand from the school. Sunderland Elementary School, to be specific. Um, 10000 for benefits and insurance, and then 1000 for the miscellaneous and reserve. And uh, I think maybe I'll go down this, this list here, yeah. too, because it kind of itemizes, itemizes out what... Where those numbers came from. Right. So from the select board, we have 1000 from technology and 1000 from grant writing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, telecom expenses, 2000 Town buildings, telephone expenses, 2000 1000 from town building maintenance, 3000 from energy contingency, excuse me, 1000 from police expense, 1000 from animal control, 1000 from tree expenses, uh, 1000 from the library expenses, 12000 from the elementary school, 5000 from Unemployment category of benefits and insurance, 5000 from the town insurance category of benefits and insurance, 1000 from maintenance for the town rec fields for a total of $37,000. And then if you transfer it, take that in, into the free cash line, it's $26,914. Not a free cash for that. If I could, Mr. Chair, mm, yes, please. This, this came out of department meeting last week. I met individually with um, the department heads that are listed, and um, they agreed that they would be able to reduce their expense lines by a thousand dollars. The other, the uh, under the benefits and insurance category, I contacted Maya to um, see what the final numbers for fiscal year 18 are. And they're just over 86,000 for all insurance, and then we had a credit of just over 4,500, um, a participation credit, and then we have a rewards uh, credits too, of uh, just over 1,800 dollars. So I was able to uh, back out some funds there. Now, under town insurance, if we could, Mr. Chair, if I could, yeah. town insurance, that's buildings, assets, liability, those kinds of things. This right. isn't the concerns that the treasure collector yeah. raised not about the health insurance. Not the health there insurance. was just okay. no room in there. Yeah, we didn't want to touch that, right? Yeah, we, we, we looked, but 
just yeah, so wasn't safe okay. to do that. Yeah. Okay. And as you know, Scott, we just approved an appropriation transfer to pay like ten thousand this year yeah. short. So. Yeah. Okay. So. Thanks for the clarification. Do you want to go over anything, Tom? I. Well, I have comments, but I, yeah. I think. The town side of the budget has been very flat for the last seven, eight years. Yep. So you're taking a thought. You're you're take you're taking a thousand dollars from certain areas, and are you you're you're plugging in a gap for this year? Um, but you're if anybody thinks the expense line items, the line items for expenses in any one of our the, is where you're making huge cuts or you're making fundamental changes to the budget and you're you're sadly mistaken. Yeah. So I I don't I don't I understand why we do it, but you're not we're not solving a problem. We're not even beginning to solve a problem. Right. So chipping by, away at a small percentage doing, of it. So so and I mean you go you look at the second, you know, line in, you know, you have a two point seven percent growth. I, I mean that's I just I, I know where money spent okay I I know that we've had we've had search committees in a very you know it's and unfortunately one of our our biggest expense and the school's biggest expense plain and simple is labor oh. I will reiterate, there's no one that gets a paycheck from the town of Sunderland that's getting rich. <laughs> no, that is and true. I, and I think if most of the, I think if most of the people that served on the, on the committees will tell you, it's very difficult to find qualified people for the positions um, with the salaries that are being paid right now. And and I and I, and, and we've heard it in the last two or three searches for for different positions. Right. <clears throat> so I, it you know so we've been someone, at one of them. someone out there is thinking that you solved the problem by voting uh, not to to raise taxes and that the selectmen have with the with the finance committees have found a way to present a balanced budget uh, we really haven't right so we're, we're not we're not making any fundamental changes and and I would strongly encourage um, the town to actually ha actually have an open dialogue to discuss where where we're at and where we're going to go, um, because if we continue, if we go to town meeting, one thing is voted. You go to the ballot box, something else is voted, and 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 they don't correspond. Yeah, it, can you do that? Yeah, but you're not you're not allowing the town to move forward correctly or. In a, in a structured manner. Makes sense. We've had one override since 81, right? From back in the 90s, what year was it? 93. 93. <clears throat> and, you know, we're not here every year asking for overrides. It's just periodically you have to expect that there's going to be some kind of adjustment that you have to make, in addition to all the cuts that you end up having to make. <clears throat> and when you look at it, especially on the school side, None of this is to add new programs or anything like that. This is just to keep our heads above water. <clears throat> All right. Uh, do you want to go over the, uh, the Actually, the sheet? If, if, I I could, think, if I could yeah, weigh in some kind of commenting on it. We left the annual town meeting and the election uh, with a little over $63,000 in gaps. Uh, looks like this proposal has $37,000 in expense reductions. Again, it was at the elementary school committee meeting on uh, Thursday last week. Thursday last week. I want to thank everyone else who attended. That would be me. So for all of the hoopla about cost control of the elementary school, yeah. during a budget reduction meeting, there was one person in the gallery. But I stayed for the whole meeting because it was important to hear what they said across the whole thing. That said, the proposed plan in front of us includes uh, additional use of free cash 
of twenty nine thousand twenty six thousand nine hundred and fourteen dollars. Um, now remember, at annual town meeting, we we set aside free cash values in stabilization and capital stabilization. So as you go over the annual the special town meeting warrant, the only place to get free cash is from a warrant article. Uh, those free cash reserves in the time since the election and annual town meeting, it's become abundantly clear that we're having to gird for, and the people I've spoken with and have called my house have said, you know, we need to be able to ready, be ready for next year. So that yeah. said, um, that free cash is not going to come from stabilization, nor are we proposing to have it come from capital stabilization, which frankly it cannot. So. Right. And our free cash amount is not going to be as plump as this one. Correct. For sure. Absolutely right. Year. So again, $37,000 in reductions, expense request reductions, and then $26,000 of available revenues going forward. That's our current proposal. So if, since we have a department in the room, could I ask the library where $1,000 is going to come from since it puts you back just between 13 and 14? FY13 and FY14. It, again, it's expense. Oh, none of this is labor. Expense. Yep. Expense. Uh, well, I can tell you what we did the last time, which was we took it out of books and materials, and then we had to increase our fundraising goal. And we're always very concerned about having a fundraising goal that's um, unsustainable. Okay. And if I could have Mr. Chair a follow-up mm -hmm. question, does this in any way, shape, or form uh, affect us with respect to the three-year rolling average, having had a couple of years of expense? appropriations towards expense does this put us in jeopardy going forward with that this level of reduction doesn't okay um, because of other um, but because of the total expenditure still is up fits in the formula okay yeah, because of staff pay increases we're, we're okay this year mm -hmm. um if we were to have no pay increases for staff this year mm -hmm. plus okay. the thousand dollar reduction we'd be like two dollars above the above the minimum, okay. Um, so yes. next year, if there's more reductions, it's going to be a problem. Okay, great. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. And just after 2008, we were in a waiver situation. Right. So. I remember that. Yep. I think we were in that for a couple of years at least, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. And at that time, we were lucky enough to be in the same boat with a lot of other communities due to the overall economic slowdown. So. Right. In this case, we're not going to, I think they're probably a little less inclined to look on favorably on waivers. At that time, there, was a, um, there used to be a limited number of waivers, and right. in 08, they went to an unlimited number of waivers with so many towns. So sure. Yeah. yeah that, was, that, that was a tough time. <laughs> and judging by. Uh, the activity Saturday, we get quite a lot of use out of the library. So the, the visit from the llama. What's that? 102. 102. That's good. Plus the llama. Plus the llama, <laughs> right. <laughs> so if I may, Mr. Chair, mm. um, after after the, the vote and leading up to the vote, I, I had talked to various people. And there was a, there was a couple of people who said, well, and they said, well, where, where should we make where, where would you look at cuts? And they said, the library. We we're spend too much money on the library. And I go, do you know how much the library budget is? Does anybody know what the library budget is? And well, a few of us do. And and, <laughs> and, and I, I I said, I'm you know, for, for I mean, it's one hundred and thirty three thousand dollars, and and it's not one of our bigger departments I mean yeah. and it says well <laughs> and you go right down it cut, cut the police budget okay you know what the police budget is and and for some reason there's a thought that they're the these are million dollar departments and sure. and, no. they're, and they're not they're not they're not anywhere they're not anywhere near that and, and if you look at the, the uh, uh, police department the total police department for Almost twenty four seven, not full twenty four seven. It's four hundred forty one thousand dollars. I mean, that's and it's not like we have a huge fleet of vehicles out there either. So, right. so uh, I, 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 why, why I say this? I said I, I think it'd be again. 
people need our residents need to have that discussion to understand how much is actually being being spent right. and when when you talk about health 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 and health benefits well Sunland pays 55 percent of the health benefit um, 55 percent when the and is about as low as that we can go and we're finding out every year um, we're getting closer and closer that how much we're paying people compared to their benefits we're, we're pushing in a line where the, right. sometimes the government the state or federal government came back and say you need to either pay more or pay pay more salary or pay more uh, of the, the, of the, benefits. the, the be benefit that was those are those are those are some things that we're looking at every day it was one of the things in, the, in some of the personnel committee meetings we were talking about is that we're kind of on the low end of that percentage too compared to other communities so we are <coughs> and and you know like and, and the, other, the other one is like the highway department our highway department and i'd stick our highway department up against a lot it's 270 271 thousand dollars plus whatever we get from from chapter 90 right so yeah. I, again, I, I just, I, I think it'd be nice if we could just look at what other towns are spending and where we are, and we're not too bad. No, especially when you look at tax rates and things like that. Point of information. Hmm. You mentioned that the government can come back in if the salary and benefits ratios aren't within a certain framework. Yeah. Uh, that's what the I have, uh, been, treasurer been deemed unaffordable for the last that's couple of years. So they have the, so it's not local control over that. You have to fall within certain state and federal guidelines. Currently, I think isn't that determined how many employees you have in the town, or, or any private employer if you have over so many employees? I think so. Yeah, you have to provide so much. Health insurance and stuff like that. I believe that's it's, like, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a mix of the premium and the premium costs against yeah. the total employment. The formula right. is universal. And but it don't only applies to businesses or people employ over so many people. No, the town's been notified by yeah, we've, we've been notified yeah. that we, we run we run risk of we run a risk of being deemed unaffordable if an employee chooses to do that. Okay. There is an opportunity right now. And as someone who employs people, for an employee to reach out to an agency and say, this health care coverage doesn't quite cut it. Okay. But it's, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Correct. I think you're thinking of that 50 person cutoff or whatever for the yeah, medical. Like but with the school, that's, that's, we're that's over a the limit. Yeah, it's a different. Yeah. Right. With the school, we're well over that. Yeah. Remember, so the answer to the question is yes. Right. Yeah. The answer to your question is yes. So if I could, what I'm hearing is these reductions, Mr. Chair, bring our budget down to 7541569, an increase of $263,000, $263,104, which still outpaces our available two and a half in new growth, but we're yep. planning on using upwards of $150,000 of available free cash. That would be correct. Okay. <clears throat> Yes. Yeah. Going through the budget just briefly when I got it today, I noticed that mm -hmm. there's a there's a new item of five thousand dollars for the maintenance of the ball fields, recreational fields. I think that's reduced. If, if, if yeah, we did reduce it. Reduced from six thousand dollars to five thousand right. dollars. Yeah. And when you when you look back at the fire department budget, you know there's a big increase in that going back to pre. Yeah. The, the Tri County Ambulance Service Canal, and now it's, it's about a seventy-six thousand dollars increase mm -hmm. from, from the things. And I think going forward, that when new programs are started, we have to find a revenue source for that program. Sure. sure. You know whether it's whether it's you go for a specific override for that program that year, or for what you do. But you know, as you as you add programs, and you know. The five thousand dollars, very small amount, but I'm sure that's going to creep up. And where's the money sure. going to come from to fund it into the future? Right. 
And, and yeah. <clears throat> even at that level, I'm sure there's a number of people who would argue that we're not really doing enough to maintain that. Uh, you I, know? I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, right. I, I agree with you. Do you know what I mean? So but, that's. But I mean, the ambulance <clears throat> service, I mean, the ambulance service that they got now, there's no doubt about it that it saved lives in town. Right. And it's, it's a good service. But if it's a service that we want, we got to come up with a way to fund that before we institute it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it, it's the same way with the school. When they add programs or whatever, they got to find out a way to fund them, whether it's you know a menu override or whatever, uh, or, or you know some sort. Sure. And yeah, we haven't been in that position for a while in the schools, unfortunately. No, I know but, that, but you know, but yeah. I mean, when they you, just as a general increases, they need add staff or whatever, you know. So, I mean, it's a tough situation to be in. I mean, your employees are your biggest cops mm -hmm. in your whole budget. Right, that's pretty and, much and, any. And we don't over-employ a lot of people. Right. Well, we do. When you count the schools. But in, in school, in the grammar school, elementary school, are our employees. Yeah, I realize that. Though. Yes, I, and that, and, but that's, and, and, and again, you look, you know, the, the, hard, the hard thing, and, and, and it's an endless discussion, I think, is that if you if you went back 10 11 years and you looked at the percentage of the education budget that was paid by the state government that's, 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 you, you'd be yeah. and, and 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 to me that would be a, the, the only pie chart I'd ever want to look at is that <laughs> chart because yeah, open right up. we Big went slides. we went yep. from like 65 67 percent of the edu local education being paid by the state down to in the 20 is it 20 30 percent now 20, it, it, it's i mean there's a there's a going to charter schools is that chapter 70. <coughs> total yeah. chapter 70. it's ours yeah. it's, it, something percent. it's like 31. It, yeah but it's been it's 50 percent low essentially 50 percent less than a decade ago now you it, it's, an it's amazing numbers and but if you if you looked at if you looked at them it, it, you just make it you know, th this year, what the in the last budget they increase um, state funding by twenty dollars or twenty five dollars a student. Yeah. Think of that, Michael. Twenty dollars a student. So you've got like a double whammy of the state percentage going down plus just general costs. I mean, even if you left everything level, you can't. You know, you're going to have increases in costs. So. Because it's particularly in a town this size, you just there's nowhere else to absorb that. Well, that's it. The state right. And I've been thinking about a pie chart for that, <laughs> for that number. That's one thing I've been actually thinking about because I don't think I think right. I don't, I don't think people know enough about that and realize the impact on not just our town, but you know, really every town, <laughs> especially more in the rural areas. That the, the impact that that has. <clears throat> we could be ready for it again next year because it was 2008 was the last time there was significant reductions in the federal budget, which affected the state budget, which affects the local budget. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. budget that's being presented tomorrow, the draft, mm -hmm. the, the proposal, detailed proposal being presented tomorrow, cuts $80 billion in one year from Medicaid. Medicaid is directly funded to the states. That's going to come down to the states. And if the state doesn't have money for Medicaid, it's going to cut it from these other programs. That's plain and simple. That's an excellent point. Is, is there any other way we can raise revenue in the town? Sure. You know, any, any, any other way? Like, like I know uh, was Charles Mott was trying to get a recreation tax. Did that ever go through? Do you know anything no, about that? No, yeah. it didn't. It didn't? It didn't. And there was various reasons why they said one that they just ran out of time. But Bruce, that's that's a that's an interesting point because what they wanted to do was they wanted with all and and the businesses that are there were all for it. The, you know, uh, the yeah, Crabtree yeah, and Zor yeah. and Berkshire East. What they wanted to do was they wanted to put a tax on every ticket they sold, and it was three percent or five percent, right, whatever right. the number was, so that they they could they could generate enough money to to run an ambulance system. And public safety. Yeah. Public safety. And you would think. That's a pretty, pretty novel way to go about it, doing it, and especially with the businesses. The businesses there, and they think it's a good idea. And 
uh, I think it's supposed to be refiled the next the next legislative cycle is supposed to be refiled, but it, it didn't pass this year. But I think two years now, two or three years that they've been trying for it. So it's kind of like a recreation version of meals tax, essentially. Because we had a similar thing where we instituted meals tax, the, the excess meals tax. Yep. And, and we can. That generates what, about 40, 50 grand now? About 40 grand, yep. Yeah. Right, because we can go up over that right. regular right. rate. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's important to bear in mind that it was an adoption of a state law. Right, the state allowed yeah. you to do that, right? Right, I, right. I know right. That, yeah. But. Yeah, I hear what you're saying about whether it be special funds, enterprise funds, how they're directed. That's a it's worth exploring. I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. That's that's the part of the solution for the problem. I mean, it's getting more revenue in. in, in yep. Because you know, it, property it, tax, really, in my opinion, is, is it's not a fair tax. You know, because you have elderly people in town and stuff, and they struggle to pay their property mm -hmm. tax. Yep. You know, and and that's why you get the no votes out there. Sure. And, and you can't blame those people and, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. I think that's why a number of places, not necessarily in this country and right here, but they do things like value-added tax, like a sales tax, instead of property or income tax. Because in a way, you know, people look at that as, a, you know, a fair, and you can make arguments there too, but that's another tool that people are using. You know, you go up to Canada and things like that. Well, yeah. That, that, yeah. Through here gets a lot of traffic. Sure does. It does. It does. So, so I, I don't know. I don't know how the how you generate state would feel about that, but <laughs> you know the last the last time we generate. A, a different source of taxes was through the uh, the meals tax and and the hotel tax, yeah. and and when we we agreed to do that, I mean we do we get some we get some revenue from it, but I think I think that's the 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 thing that we struggle with is we're an awful lot like a lot of the bedroom communities around Boston, where we really don't have much in the way of commercial, very small. No industrial, really, to speak of, um, and we don't have like Charlemont. We don't have the that whole line of business in terms of like um, <clears throat> outdoor activities. So we're kind of limited in that. I mean, we definitely need to look at stuff, but I think you know, I think we're going to find that we're kind of limited, unfortunately, in in the categories and places we can look at for revenue. But you know, and, and any ideas, hey, you know, it's definitely worth looking at. Little toll booth on the bridge, maybe you know. <clears throat> Put up a little Apple Pay reader, and they can just hold their phone out as they drive by, you know. <laughs> but <clears throat> who controls the amount of money the state gives in pilot programs? Do they determine they do. what they're they, going to do? They do. The state it. does. Legislature. Right. Yeah. What do you see for pilot? Payment. Well, I know, I know what it is. Um, what do you see for revenue from it? As far well, as like we, and sure. Yeah, uh, and we're starting to get. This is our first year, but we will be getting some for the solar project. So, to, to answer your question, we have to pull down, pull apart our general government. But our general government, actually, we're uh, basing our revenue estimate equal to uh, FY16, which is about twenty-two thousand dollars less than FY17. We're anticipating some measure of cuts somewhere. But your pilot money, we'll get, I, I can get that for you. It's, it's, one, it's, what do you got for yeah. sources? You got the state fish hatchery, Mount Toby. That's it. Actually, there's quite a, there's actually quite a bit, Michael. Split um, up pieces of land. Yeah. Essentially, it's all land-based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For us, you know, there's actually quite, yeah. a, quite a bit. But, but then, so, so what happened is that it's the pilot program started and really out in western western mass and and in places on the cape and then what hap what happened is that as um cities and town out east saw that we were getting money when the it started hitting out you know the eight nine years ten years ago whatever it was all of a sudden they started making claims for and all of a sudden that pilot the pilot total fund didn't go up that much, yeah. 
but a lot of other things. So dispersals. Yeah, exactly. So and, 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 there's, and there's towns like um, what is it, Coleraine or all, all um, you know that that have a lot of state land. You know, or Savoy, and and, and most of the towns are state land, and they can't really develop it, and and they've gotten hit really hard by that. So, yeah, ocean, all those would be. Well, and, and I mean, you know, you you look at one of the other things that is is that hurts us is the uh, transportation for school transportation for regional school districts. You know that that was always promised at a hundred percent, and you know one year they cut it. They want to cut go back to what was it like twenty eight percent or something, and and the guys out here. You know the legislators out here put up a big stink. I'll never forget. Was it DeLeo that came out here one time? Macy, and De Macy, Macy. Macy. and and they they, they had, had no they idea. drove down too. Right. That was the story. They had because they don't yeah. in their cities they don't really see school buses. And all of a sudden they came out here and 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 you look and and we're bad. But you think about Franklin Tech. How would you like to run that that bus system? In Franklin Tech or Mohawk? I watched them dismissed yeah. today. Yeah. Well, yeah. They waited in line in traffic to get through. Right. Yeah, so in the Boston area, the T will pick up a lot of the bus service. Right. So, the routes. I mean, so, but, but again, those are discussions that we, you know, it, Ma Massachusetts, Massachusetts um, has, on the, on the state government, has worked very hard to change the name Taxachusetts and get rid of that. And if you look at the taxes that we pay, we're... It was right in the middle of the pack the last time for all the saw. states. From from yeah. being always in the you know the most cut taxes or whatever, we're we're back down. But what's happened is it shifted. So you pay a hundred dollars for an FID. You you pay ten dollars to buy a surf uh, surf uh, casting. You know if you want to go oh, surf license. fishing or saltwater fishing, you're gonna pay ten dollars for that and. All the licensing went up. There's right, right. You're licensing your fees. Another revenue source. Right. Yeah. You know. So, so they just they just shifted that. So, and, and you buy and you buy a a hunting license, and you you're going to get a was a wild wildlife or whatever. Wildlands, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. another five bucks that you get the it's same. It's easier politically to do that because you just get you hit disparate small groups. So. Yeah. Well, on your seventieth birthday, your LTC will be free. So. <sighs> Perfect. <laughs> no, mine was I. I got mine from Walter Balloonis, and it said on there, "Good forever unless revoked, <clears throat> suspended." Until the, gun, until the Gun Control Act of 1990. And I still have that because I lose my wallet. Anyways, <clears throat> anybody have any other? To answer Mike's, Sage tidbits. Answer Mike's yeah. question, the governor's budget has us in at $130,000 this year for pilot, and they call that state-owned land. Okay. Which is which is volatile. Uh, half a dozen years ago, it was not quite twice that. But again, I, I get it. Yeah. And these aren't new issues. These issues yeah. now, like no. back in the 90s, they were the same issues sure. we have it. You know, Regional transportation, the pilot program. Same animals. Well, and, you know, the state aid. And every, every time we ran into problems with a budget, mm -hmm. this is state aid gets cut. Sure. Right. And, and you get, depending on that state aid, whether it's the schools, the town, or whatever, you know, he give it to us and he takes it away. Sure. So, sure. And we've had that reduction in state taxes, too, that people voted in. So it's like, yeah, you, know, you, you know, you can't so, have it both ways. I mean, you know, that's. And, and like Tom says, you go to other states. And, and our taxes aren't really that bad in Massachusetts. Go down to Connecticut. When you, you go, go to the grocery, grocery store. They tax on everything. Yes, and they have county and local taxes yes, over there. Absolutely. And if you go to Connecticut, when you go to the stop and shop, you're paying tax on your grocery bill. Yeah. You know, so it's... Um, well, and the, the talk about the transportation, that just made me think, too. Of, you know, one of the things you know, you're looking at is, okay, well, let's regionalize maybe a school or something like that. Now your transportation costs are going to go up. Because now you've got to bus people from farther areas. So well, the carrot there's, was the state was <laughs> virtual 100%. For yeah, well, adults, so. that carrot's gotten a lot smaller. It's about that big now. <laughs> but, um, do we have any other new ground to sell on, uh, on our budget right now at all? Or? So you guys don't have a quorum, you have, you have a chance to recommend before the special? or? Yeah, we will on the 13th. Okay. okay. Tuesday, 13th, we'll meet again to vote on it. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair, if I could, I'll make a motion to yes. adopt the FY 18 budget of 
$569, total increase of $263,104. And that represents a value that is $37,000 less than we brought to town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, Sherry. And now, um, I'll save our updates for the last time we go over our warrant next. <clears throat> we have to review and approve our large special town meeting warrant here. Excuse me. <clears throat> so now we're down to three articles on here. Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> we'll just go through and read each one and then we can. Uh, actually, if, if, if the clerk doesn't mind, or Sherry, you want to give us an synopsis about what we're starting with? For Article 1, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of the reduction is from 105000 to 65000 mm -hmm. Article 2 um, is the budget, and the budget approved at town meeting is 7578569 so we're reducing the amount raised and appropriated by 37,000 um, for a total fiscal year of budget of 7,514,655, and, and we're transferring an additional $26,914 from free cash. And the, the motion, I'm sorry, on the motions here, excuse me, on the article, the other available funds, the motions will determine the location of the funding source. Correct. Yeah. And uh, the highway article three is for the fuel, uh, fuel pump dispenser at the highway garage. Mm -hmm. And um, George is just finalizing those costs. It's estimated about $16,000. Is that a total replacement? Yes, and the um, software as well. Yeah, but then, uh, like we were talking about earlier, we've got some other savings in the budget that came in, so we'll end up, I think, about $5,000 right. net increase the in the end, So, which was nice. We received a, a grant, uh, the FERCOG for accounting services, of $12,000, so um, we had appropriated a little over 14000 at the annual town meeting. So with the FERCOG grant that we just received, it'll just be um, a little over $2,000. I got a question at the Spencer system. I mean, that's a lot of money to spend the amount of gas we use. Sure. Who currently uses the fuel? Just the highway department and the police? The, the highway police. and the police. Most police departments stopped using municipal fuel tanks years ago and go with a go with a Lex card. Have you ever considered it? We have. Yep. We did talk about it. <clears throat> One of the issues that came up it was the uh, October storm a couple, couple of years ago. We had a couple of days no power. Mm -hmm. We we were able to dispense fuel and and convenience stations were not. I was a police chief then and we didn't lose a gallon. Okay. I mean, we've gone to Turner's Falls to get it, but sure. is, it, is it worth $16,000 for that kind of convenience? Sure. It's worth, it's worth exploring. I, 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 just, I just think it's a lot of money. I mean, when you cost that out over a number of years and stuff. Sure. You know, and, and you, you contract your gas out, your diesel fuel out, and that price, that price fluctuates, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, and... and uh, you know, then you got to maintain the system. You got to sure. whatever to it. You know? yeah. I, I just uh, keep in mind that October storm <coughs> went up within 24 hours because the utility companies needed fuel too. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> you know, the only thing I can see is we only got one gas dispenser at top. That's that is the shortfall of that. <coughs> With if you if you drew a circle, you yeah, I know what you're saying. In the in the boundaries of the town, sure. Right. Yeah, so we don't have, we've lost a few gas stations over the years. So well, we can continue to explore that with the two department heads. Yep. <clears throat> so I go, to Tom. 
Hmm? Oh, you're yawning. No, no. no. I was, I was, I was it, supposed to talk about Article One, but are you ready to talk about that, Mister? Yeah, I think so. Article One. Yep. So the uh, <coughs> the uh, three hundredth committee um, had a short meeting. They um, it, they they reviewed their their ins and outs and and the money and. Right now, they're not. They're not going to. Uh, they weren't in a position to take a vote because they didn't have the full committee right there. So they weren't going to uh, make a recommendation. But they did. They they believed um, that the, for starting the year out um, in the celebration, that 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 sixty five would would be enough to to get accomplish what they need to have accomplished. I also, in, in during the conversations, I, I, I think um, they didn't have enough time. Um, and I know, and I know it's, it's how a town meeting is run. I understand Robert's rules. I understand town meeting time. And I understand when someone calls a question. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, sometimes, um, Someone, someone can call a question, and and never f an, an article or a question can never be fully answered. Yeah. Um, and, and I I agreed with them. I agree with them at, at that point because one, once a question is called, then it's just going to go, and and people know how they're going to vote. most of the time, most of the time, I think people know how they're voting. Right. It's, right. it's very difficult difficult to get. And Lauren will attest to this. I think it's very difficult to try to get the necessary information out to people. You're always trying to find that best way to do it. Yeah. So once the question's called, the moderator doesn't have any choice but to to go point. and vote. Yeah. And and again, if, and what happens is that so people say call the question. All those in favor says aye because it's non debate non debatable question. Yep. And then. And there, and there could be a couple people that have a very good question, but they can't, they can't or, or they just it. need to understand it. So I feel bad sometimes. I feel bad for those that, that when sometimes when a question's called like that, but it's the way we do it. And, and I, I don't think they, they were able to explain that this is more seed money than, than the total cost of the program. Right. And, and that and that's the hard that's the hard thing for him. And, and 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 you look on. There's one guy. He's probably sitting in the room right now. But if you give him a nickel, he'd squeeze seven cents out of the nickel. So um, he's just a. That that's what they do, and that's what most of the people on that committee are like. And they, it's not a frivolous expenditure of money. But they they I don't think they're able to explain what they wanted to do. So. <clears throat> So at, at, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not doing a good job either. Is that at the end you're probably going to get that money back? It's just that you need that right. you need or, or portions of it. Better you pay, just need, pay you bills. Need that front. Right. Yes. Yep. So that's a really good point, Tom. Got to spend it to make it in the long run. Right. In that sense. <clears throat> and I think it falls victim too of uh, as the night wears on. There's more of a tendency to want to call questions sometimes. So. <clears throat> so the goal here is. Reduce that, re revisit that article, reduce that appropriation by forty thousand dollars. If if the article passes, that would allow the use of twenty nine thousand toward the operating budget, bringing our total use of free cash toward the operating budget of one hundred and fifty four zero five eight, which, in recent memory, is still pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. We've been north of two hundred in past years. Right. That also leave one hundred and forty six thousand dollars going forward into the coming year. To Tom's point, if I could, Mr. Chair, the, those explanations about the kind of we, we see sticker prices, right? And we're, we're, we're conditioned in America to look for things on sale and immediate, <laughs> right? They better be on sale. They better be on my doorstep. I don't care how they got there. That's and right. it better be cheaper than the other guy. That said, that one hundred and five thousand dollar discussion, I'm not entirely sure, did fair justice toward the fact that this is a multi-year appropriation. 
and that there was revenue, there was proposed revenue streams coming in on the other side. That's really important to bear in mind. And that in your discussion, Tom, that $65,000 in the current year for appropriations makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. It does. No, and, and no one argued, uh, and again, no one on the committee argued it. They just didn't feel they were in a position to vote because they didn't have the full totally get it. Full yeah, group there, and their yep. financial person was out of town, although she was on the on the TV. Yep. TV. She was on the, the telephone. So, and I understand no one, and no exactly. one argued that fact. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and we also discussed the fact that there's there's another town meeting a year from now, also. Of, Correct. Of, uh, right. So. Okay. What I want to add on is the fundraising is progressing for the, for the anniversary. Mm -hmm. you know, the funds are coming in, right. fundraising, and a lot of that money will be reimbursed. Absolutely. A lot of that seed money. Right. Yep. And you start to see that momentum and, and, burst. And I, and I realize there's a lot of people out there that are just saying, well, geez, we're spend all that money on a party, but we can't balance the budget. But it's not getting to the root cause of the budget because. We're robbing Peter to throw it, taking out of our savings account. Sooner or later, the savings account is going to be down enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And, and it's a it's a it's a one time it's a one time expense. Yeah, it's it's one -time not it's shot. not it's not a re and again just like our thousand dollar cut from the library. Thank you. I mean, thank you, trustees. And but that's not that's, that's not solving, solving problem. our problem. Correct. That that's not you know that's not really solving the problem. So. More? Well, worse than not solving the problem. I mean, I just heard in the general government some of the money is coming out of grant writing, and yet we yeah. just got a twelve thousand dollar grant. So some of these cuts are going to cost money. But, well, that's exactly it. Or, or you know, you lose out on opportunities that you know now we can't, we don't have time or the ability to write grants, so we're losing out on potential savings. <clears throat> like um, the grant that we got, it was just think we were talking earlier about for our phone system. We we're able to cut, I think, about in half, right? Our phone costs yeah. and that was through grant right. money right. because we were able to get new equipment and essentially switch over. So, yep. a perfect example of your point. So reduce reduce that grant money so we can go forward and have it be a capital project instead of actually being a grant. Right. Right. It's a it's a terrible catch twenty two. <laughs> And then, like we've had the discussion with the schools, you know, that I have seen in some things, uh, editorials in the paper about, oh, we should just, you know, first thing we do is make cuts. But we've actually now got data to show that, well, it, it, it ends up being sort of a penny wise, pound foolish thing. Oh, well, sure, we'll slash the budget and we'll make the cuts. But then it ends up costing us maybe even more money sure. in the long run over the next few years as we end up losing people and spending more money sending kids to other areas and things like that. So. <clears throat> and, and I would once again say, if if to, to, you have to have a discussion about you, you can say cut all you want, sure. um, but you have to have that discussion, yep. and 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 and, and to, to have that discussion, you have to participate. And I don't know how you're going to participate, but but I've known, I have known many times, and over the years, some, someone get get um they'll they'll come in and say you need to do this and you go we already do that yeah. you need to do this we we already do that well you need to do this and 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 i and, and again i i think it's it's good that you have to have these ideas but you also have to know what we're doing also exactly and and i and, I, and again, it's 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 easy, it's easy not to be involved, and I think that's what for us to succeed. We all have to we, we have to we have to be involved. We have to you have to you you got to have that communication. Um, and 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 I know a family that a, a guy I talked to that that had three kids go through Sunderland and Frontier. And, he's, well, and, he, and he said, and we talked, and he says about voting, and, and he said, well, he's going to vote no because he doesn't get anything from the town. <laughs> and, but I understand that. And he says, well, you had three kids when, when you know, started off, and, you know, you had three kids. You know, right now it's 13000 for Sunland Elementary, which is in the bottom third of the state. You got 17000 at Frontier. 
So it's a figure 15, so that's 15 a kid, yep. you know, $15,000 per kid times 12 year. years for, <coughs> so, you know, that's 45,000 times 10, is $450,000. Your property taxes, you can pay them a long time and never- and You would hit that amount, yep. That's just for your children. <coughs> and, and Bruce is right, you know, when he, told, when he says about the ambulance system, the, we the reason that we had an ambulance system or went to the is because our our volunteer system was failing. Right. And and it was, not only here but all over the state. Oh, yeah. Bruce, we we you I can't even start to tell you about how many telephone calls that that the South County EMS gets about having Zach and explain how in and, and or Jonathan or myself or boards about how it works um, because it is. Um, and it, it is a model that's being that's being looked at in a lot of different places, but our, it was going to fail because we no longer, you know, you can talk. I mean, you can count Richard Dickinson, uh, Ruben Drake, uh, the Hubbards, the uh, Bobby Hearn, uh, and, and I mean, Bob, your generation is g gone. But they were all on the top. Still here. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but but they 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 were involved in in and we no longer we no longer you know have those volunteers and 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 and, and our our fire department EMTs were being stretched. The ones that we have were really being stretched to to meet the requirements. People don't work in town. Well, that's that, there's a there's a lot of things that affect right. They don't work in town. All employees, the volunteer employees services. Employers aren't so readily available to release their staff. Right. As they did 20 years ago. Right. All the volunteer services are getting you know, hit by that. We're selling mail, man. Delivering the mail, the ambulance call went out. He drove the mail truck to the fire department and took yep. care of that. Went on. Yeah. So, and and again, I I I'm just I'm just important. If you if you think. If you have a better way, or you, you, just saying no, you're, you're making a statement. But you have to solve the problem, and you're not going to solve the problem just saying by saying, "Well, you kind of do," but <laughs> I'm not saying you wow. don't. But 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 you really have. You should become involved, and 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 write an write an email. I don't whatever you, however you feel, write an email, whatever it is, just to try to help solve the problem if you have ideas because. Um, I think it is important, and it's worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. Great, great. In terms of participation, trying to get people to participate in the project, Conway and Northfield are two towns that I know of that have taken a different approach. Conway has a, they call it a pre-town meeting, where they have a, a potluck dessert supper at the Conway Grammar School. Sure. Yep. And at that meeting, you know, the budget is presented and all the different departments present their stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's been very successful. Mm -hmm. Northfield tried a similar thing this year, and it was the school committee that started it, and they had a spaghetti supper at the school. And they wanted a donation, I don't know, it was five or six bucks. And Northfield isn't a very big town. They had over 200 people hmm. come to the dinner. And all of the different line items, the yeah. groupings, you know, somebody got up and went made over. a presentation on it. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, is that something we could do or? Yeah. You know, along that line too, and, 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 and you know, everybody's on a computer now, except me. I mind a little bit, <laughs> but the town report. Yeah. You know, guys used to look forward to getting that town report a month before the town meeting and then sit down and study it. And you know that, Bob. People would come in and they'd actually have it marked up and everything and they'd ask questions about it. And, yeah, and they, that, that generation is gone. But still, I think there's people out there that would do that. I mean, uh, well, out of curiosity, have we had any requests yeah. for that? They're still published. Communities still publish them. But so you, 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 you get it out there, no and and I think another thing is, is we got to move, we got we got to have the budget done before the week before the town meeting. I think it's going to be like thirty days before, so people get a chance to look at it in some form of written sure. form, you know, because yeah. and, 
and, and I think guys just, I mean, I think people would look at it. Well, how many requests have we gotten for it out of curiosity? I do you don't know? I think many. Um, and then the <clears> thing with the town report, it, it reflects what has already happened. So you don't have. Yeah, it's not. It's Outside not of the budget, budget. And balance of accounts. Yeah. 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 But you, you gentlemen you go real out to time. the NIA, you go to the annual conferences. Don't they give awards out to multiple cities and towns of yep. various sizes? We did okay. The annual report. Yep. We did okay a couple of years ago. Yeah. We don't even publish them. You have to go on a computer to look at it. Sure. Well, we used to. Yeah. That was a way well, to save it. costs. We know we have to cut it. Maybe uh, even if you don't publish it. You're still relying on people who used to get it in the mail to know that there's one there to look at. Um, how are you going to get a new generation even interested in sure. looking at Good it point. if you don't let them know it's there? And Lord knows we couldn't discriminate and have it be above people above 50 getting one in the mail. Yeah. I was thinking about a newsletter that would could go out on the listserv at school. Yeah, um, there's on a, a there's quarterly a number basis of... that kind of reflects what's going on in real time in town, what some of the issues are, what some of the events are, you know, the good, the bad, and, well, and the ugly sometimes, but honestly, at least... Yeah, you can look at like that, or I mean, you know, this is where social media comes in, and yep. we haven't been doing a lot of it, because quite frankly, you know, it, it takes work to do that, and that's, you know, it's not like we can go and hire social media specialists, you know, because... But I mean, that's another tool. It's a perennial problem, I think, trying to get things out there in terms of communication. And sometimes, no matter how hard you try, inevitably there will be somebody who says, well, I never heard about that. You don't read stuff in the paper. I mean, a reporter never sends a reporter or anything. You used to be a reporter here all the time. He's like right that, there. Like that no. gentleman right there? That's when you were selectman. They had <laughs> what? You know, you have reporters, you know? I mean, he, he, she came in or he came in all the time. Yeah, actually, all actually, 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 Bruce, we had... We had two reporters. When I, uh, we had yeah, the Gazette. We had reporter. We had Bill Sweet. Was at every every other, other meeting or so. Right. We actually had three reporters. And once, big, big whenever Montague didn't have theirs on, we'd have uh, Hugh Massey would come and and do it. WHMP. So, although I will say, if you ask the gentleman over there at the recorder, he'll probably tell you how much subscribers have dropped in the intervening oh, years. So it's that. you know, but still. <laughs> I think I think the point about getting. I'll get the sure. Oh, a lot of people. I get both of them just because I like to see you know various coverages and then what's going on on the social media sites and things like that. But I think that's some of the things that we probably are going to have to start looking at doing things like that. Um, <clears throat> there's definitely some merit about to maybe see even if we can push back the budget and get it out there a little bit earlier because then we can publish that on the web page at least. Yeah. And get that out there. I, I would I would suggest that you need to, we need to be entirely honest about the budget process. And when we can't get budget submittals necessarily in on time, or we can't get quorums for meetings, or rooms are empty, yep. you know, I, I would I would suggest that it's it's a, it's, a, it's a laudable goal to have it thirty days in advance. And you guys voted it when? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's I'm, I'm calling point. the kettle black right now, mm. right? Yeah. Well, voted it when? Well, if if I if, if I could, our budget is done thirty. The the budget is roughed in the framework yeah, 30, exactly. thirty days yeah. in advance. It it really is. Right. But the, you our get that out. Oh, that, we can, and that's a problem because we we've never we've we've had trouble um, because we're trying to match our revenues to our expenditures right, right, right. and 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 right. so we balance. have an ex we have the expenditure portion of it but we don't have the revenue portion done sure. yet sure. and i think that's the hard part Bruce. um and i so i don't know i don't know if we we probably don't i guess we always could put our preliminary budgets on and and, and, and it's kind of a work in progress we could probably do that i mean that's a good point mm -hmm. Um, and so we can fo you can follow the machinations of going through. Um, but a lot of times we don't do the, the, the things that hold us to for our final budget is the the, the, the revenue aspect. Oh, right. But the expenditure side, I think we could do that, Bruce. I I, I think that's possible. And the revenue stuff doesn't change that much. You know, except maybe the state aid estimates and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it depends on the the state budget. Yeah. It depends like on the it. De oh, of late it hasn't. Right. Um, 
when Duvall Patrick first took when he first became the governor, we had huge swings, and, right. and and it wasn't it wasn't his fault really. It was I mean because things were happening on right. the on the stock market and Quite everywhere else. Right. Um, but when he first got and, and plus he was doing a different way of getting them. So he was t wasn't given school money to schools, so, I, and I forgot, but it was going to come all to the towns, and, and right. they were taking regionals, and so they were trying to do it a little bit different. But I, I've always wanted to do like essentially like a little section out on the website of like budget information, you know, and then you can put out some occasional interesting numbers, you know, about <coughs> budgetary stats or things like that. Because we, when we go out to the conference in January, we see a lot of interesting things that like some of the other towns are doing. Of course, it's always towns with you know people to do all of that <laughs> stuff. Right. Yeah, and exactly like you know towns with IT staff and stuff. Sure. But still, I think there's some things that we can do. You know, like we can put like as we're working on this, we can you know we can put it out there. I don't see any reason why not. Yeah, and just load it up. <clears throat> so, so have we included Article One yet? No, we need to do that. Can I move to include Article One in the warrant? Please do. Second. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right, Sorry, three to zero. Um, <clears throat> how about Article Two? Well, that's the budget, and we've spent yeah. just a fair amount of time talking here about its reduction and its available additional revenues coming, revenues use of free cash coming in. And again, I think if Article One passes, it's important to reiterate to the town that the value that Article One produces, we're going to use a little more than half of it in the operating budget of this year. And then the remainder moving forward, the remainder moving forward still less than what we're proposing to use this year. All right. Is that emotional? No, just FYI. <laughs> we just yeah. spent a lot of time talking about communicating. That's a real fact. Right. Yep. All right. Is that all? Sorry. Yeah, those are real facts. No, oh. <laughs> she got it. I'm Sure. So if Article 1 uh, passes, um, that is going to reduce, it's going to revisit uh, the th Article 12 of the annual town meeting or the 300th uh, appropriation of 105000 reduce it by $40,000. Of that $40,000, the majority of it will go to this operating budget, meaning FY18, and the remainder will reside in free cash, and that residual free cash moves into the upcoming budget year. That's essentially your seed money going forward. Yeah, right. The value going forward is less than what we're using in the budget. I just and just so people don't think, geez, you're robbing it from the 300 celebration and you're stuffing it away somewhere. No, we're actually going to fund the budget and leave a little to move forward. That's what a point I was trying to make. Sorry, I my head was elsewhere for that second. It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no worries. And that's really again thirty-seven thousand dollars in reductions, expense reductions. To the elementary school, I give a lot of uh, uh, credit for revisiting. I also give equal amount of credit to the thousand dollars here, the thousand dollars there from department heads who have waited and worked six or seven years to get that thousand dollars, and we're taking it away. What's the next one? <coughs> uh, move to include Article Two. If there's no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, sure. <coughs> All right, and then on to Article Three for our fuel pump. Well, again, if I could, Mr. Chair, this this was brought forward by the Highway Superintendent. <coughs> I think as long as it's a placeholder on the um, warrant, we have opportunity between now and special town meeting to drill down and, ex and explore some more of those concerns that have been expressed tonight. I would agree with that. <coughs> All right. Um, I have a motion on that one. Tom. Second. Okay. Oh, well, I was going to no make the motion. I didn't know if you wanted any discussion yeah. about it, Tom. Yeah. All right. Second for discussion. Second okay. for discussion. Sounds good. So, with respect to the Wex cards, that's an area that's come up in the past, and we can work. We can talk to the police as well as the highway about that, um, and get final quotes to see if this actually makes sense to retain as an asset. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's important to bear in mind. Yeah. About the discussion. I, I would I would hope before um, we didn't include this, um, we did a little study be, because I I know when gas prices were going crazy, we we were paying 
like a dollar a gallon less than that's one of the nice parts about blocking in for a year, but it cuts both ways. But I, yeah, hear, it, I, hear, it, I hear what it you're did. saying. Mm -hmm. Well, it does. But if you remember also, Scott, is that we had um, Margaret actually, um, when, when the prices got cheaper than what our rate was, she negotiated right, with right. the uh, local gas stations right. to purchase gas at those. Correct. We did, we did that like once. Where, mm -hmm. yeah, where we actually we, it was of. it was less expensive right. to buy purchase through good point a pump pump for pay plus <clears> versus <throat> what we are talking here right. so it'd be interesting to find out what we're paying right, right now for fuel cost you wouldn't by chance know off the top of your head would you Sherry I don't but I'll look into but I, it. I know right now there's two thirty not two thirty nine mm -hmm. and bumping. Greenfield is two twenty nine down in Hatton is yeah. two thirty nine. So say, up again. I'm, I'm sure we're under sure. two dollars, right? I think so. Yeah. That so, that was one of my concerns. Was that part of it? Like we got to factor that into the savings. Is, yeah. is there any annual maintenance fees down there for that? Is there inspections no. or anything like that that have to get done? Fire inspection. Actually? Yeah, just a fire inspection. Okay. It would yeah. be nice to know the history of the asset, how long it's been in service. What the benefit right. of the replacement cost is? Yeah, um, what's what's been better in service tracking? since Peggy Lake? Sixty thousand dollars, Tom. Yeah, it was expensive. It was an expensive system. It was, it was an expensive system. Do you buy your gas through the Cogs bids? Not always. Yeah, depends. depends. I know they used to go out in May. Yeah. The only thing gas does in May is spike. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. right. If you buy gas for the year in May. Right. You're kind of sure setting yourself, yourself up. The That's the biggest spike of the year because yeah. of the summer driving season. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we went to the wax guys. Smart. Like the it's a December. It's like buying heating oil in December. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same animal. Yeah. Oh, February is worse. February is yeah. worse. Exactly right. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but you're right. That'll give us a little time to go over and do some homework on it. So, okay. Any discussion? Tom? We, we already seconded. Oh, right. For discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, this is inclusion. Our motions will be that's following correct. week. Mm -hmm. But just to get our things set up. And I, I'm going to be the cynic right now. <laughs> Versus the skeptic. I, 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 can't, I can't wait for the for, first telephone call. Why is a Sunderland Cruiser in Amherst it's getting gas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, get it. we get it when we go. Yep. Get, we get tires. We get tires at a rate Greenfield. that you couldn't even think about purchasing Eagle GT tires in it was at Amherst Tire Center, True. one of the places. And why is a Sunderland Cruiser buying tires in Amherst? Right. Why are you in Amherst buying tires? Uh, it's like, because yep. we're buying a $400 tire for 50 bucks. Right. I mean, <laughs> and we got to buy, <laughs> and we got to buy four, and we got to buy four of them. So there's there's yeah. a reason for that. <laughs> I mean, you do business where the business is. You don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, right, I, I, I used to I used to, ha I used to have a, a very uh, animated discussion with a selectman from Deerfield, who got who got very upset because the Whiteley, Sunderland, and Deerfield police would be at the Shelley Deli, and, <laughs> and he took exception. And I go, I don't have a problem if they're getting together so they talk and exchange the information. I think it's a good thing. Oh, and, <laughs> and, and just like and just like now they come to Dunkin' Donuts, you, you get police from various communities to come here down to get Dunkin' Donuts. Because the salad stores are all closed at that hour. The only place open are, are donut stores. Yeah. That's why. Right. I, and, 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 exactly right. There's no place to get a salad at two o'clock in the morning. That's true. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Wild Roots. Maybe they'll have, they'll put yeah, on a third a shift. market. And, and again, I, I mean. And, and again, I just every time you take one step forward, you're getting pushed back. So, yeah. anyways, <laughs> humorous point well noted. All right, what are we doing? <coughs> All right. <laughs> so now we move on to um, board of selectmen updates. One last thing in terms yes. of you guys getting the information out. You should have Twitter. You said what? Look at all the interest that Trump generates. No. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you have Twitter, Bob? 
Huh? Is that from Twitter? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The information they heard get out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's watching them migrate, Bruce. Their Twitters are going by. Some of us do now. do. T well, that's by I mean by social media. You know, we, we have. It's one of these things you have to be very careful and measured about how you do it and everything. But uh, you know, people can look on like the uh, police department's Facebook page, for instance. You know. <clears throat> but um, if thanks, I could, Mr. Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, um, I just like I like to remind everyone. That if you that if you use uh, Route 63 between Montague and Sunderland for the next month or so, be be prepared to wait in line because they're they're uh, doing road reconstruction up there. So be careful. Um, I, and I noticed I had some. I guess till the end of June, right? That's yeah, it. from now until June 22nd. So um, be prepared or, or seek alternate routes. The um, Memorial Day Parade is uh, Friday night, and we wish you would all come um, and help uh, it's a time of remembrance for for our, uh, for those that have served and it's, it's always a nice uh, a nice oh, we have a good time yeah we do and hopefully the weather will uh, will hold out <coughs> um, the only update I have is uh, like to give a shout out to uh, all the folks over at Frontier who put on another fabulous Fred nice I know they put a lot of work into that go um, Fred and it was a, a, a good good turnout and everything. And uh, so, if anybody likes sketch comedy, it's a it's a nice little nice little event. Uh, if I could, we have one more, Mr. Chair. We have one potentially one more meeting of the uh, uh, police uh, negotiation working group, and we are waiting for our uh, completed version through the legal review, including two MOUs. Um, one about the strategy for rollout of uh, elements across the three years of the contract, and the other a carryover MOU from uh, prior negotiation that we were reminded that we collectively all forgot. So once those are in place, we expect to have bring those forward and uh, hopefully uh, have our signing. Well, that's good. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for all your work on that. No trouble. Any exciting updates, Sherry? Yes, um, hey. we had a kickoff meeting today with Emmy Hahn from DHCD and Mark Favorman from Favorman Design for oh, nice. the wayfinding and branding yeah. uh, project that we're doing, and we're looking forward to kind of establishing a working uh, group and nice. looking for a selectman uh, a representative uh, to help <laughs> us with that project. It'll be a short project, oh, good. probably okay. about six six months, okay. and not too many meetings, but. Um, we're hoping to have, uh, we already have a couple from uh, Community Pathways, but a selectman representative, uh, someone from Planning Board, and so we'll be reaching out. All right, well, I, mean, cool. I can talk to you about it after this because it's kind of tied to complete street, sort of, so. Good point. Okay. That's it. All right, and <clears throat> like Tom said, come on down to the Memorial Day Parade this Friday. Um, and then uh, 529, Memorial Day, the offices will be closed. We won't be having a meeting that day. Our next meeting will be on the 5th of June. And then we have, which we've been talking about tonight, our fabulous special town meeting on 616 at 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. So in the meantime, try to um, get as much information. And please feel free to call us, ask any questions if you have any questions about the budget or budget information. Or any of the other three topics that are on there. If I, if I could, Mr. Chair, although I, I didn't bring a book, I felt that appropriate, and based on our discussion, to reach out to one of the one yep. of the, the, the great leaders of history. And this is a quote from Ernest Shackleton, who wrote, and think about this in, in the keeping of our discussion. Uh, quote, I called the other, to the other men that the sky was clearing, and then a moment later I realized that what I had seen was not a rift in the clouds, but the white crest of an enormous wave. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, let's see, next year's budget. Just, <laughs> just, just saying, just saying. Yep. <clears throat> Motion. Uh, Second. All those in favor for adjournment? Aye. 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 Three to zero, Sherry. Is that when he yells, like, surfs up? And Thanks for coming in, FCAT. Yay. <laughs>